We bring to you the inspired word of God as you listen to the teachings and preachings of the servant of God, Hosanna David, preaching the end time gospel. Spirit of the Lord, we invite you, come down to us. All the prayers we have offered, we pray that you will accomplish all of them, answer them for us in the name of Jesus. We cover our lives with the blood of Jesus Christ. We ask that your spirit and your power will see us through. We ask that your glory will fill us today in the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, even now we ask that you speak to us. The language that we will understand. We are here for you, O Lord. Fill us with the truth so that the truth can set us free. In Jesus' name we pray. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Shout a big hallelujah. hallelujah. Today we want to talk about divine protection by angels. Do you believe angels exist? Do you believe they exist? Yes, they exist. The first place we heard about angel in the Bible, Genesis chapter 3, where God said, Cherubim. God said, Cherubim, to guard the way to the tree of life. That is the first appearance of angels. Uh, let's open our Bibles to Psalm 91, 10 to 12. There, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot Against, against a stone. Let's also read Psalm 34, verse 7. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. The angel of the Lord encampeth around those who fear God and delivered them. We believe that angels exist. What are angels? Angels are ministering spirits. They minister to us. The word angel is from the Greek word angelos. It means a messenger, envoy, one who is sent an angel, a messenger from God. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14 says, Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister to them who shall be heirs of salvation? Uh, angels are ministering spirits. They minister to us. There are different categories of angels. You have the archangels, the guardian angel, which is what we want to dwell on today, the guardian angel. The messengers, the cherubim, the seraphim, they are all angels. Satan was one of the archangels, and uh, he was in charge of the choir in heaven. He was made of precious stones and was very, very beautiful until sin, iniquity was found in him. And then he was thrown down from where? When iniquity was found in him, he was thrown down from heaven. Angels have been in existence before we human beings came into existence. For instance, Let's look at a few things about Satan, who was once Lucifer. 
Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12, follow it. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which this, this weaken the nation? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the side of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. He wanted to be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. So Satan was thrown down by God from heaven. Why? Because iniquity was found in him. This scripture is very, very important to what we are looking at today. Because today we want to look at the divine protection that we have in God. How God uses angels to protect us. And I tell us, that God himself made it this way for God to send Lucifer who is now Satan to the earth and still create men and women to live in the earth the same world with Lucifer God had in mind the plans for our protection the angel of the Lord and comes around those who fear God to protect him, to protect her from the hand of the evil one. For instance, we know that in the universities in Nigeria here, yeah, there are cultists. There are people who have no earthly parents who go to schools, Satan sent into this world to cause havoc on earth. There are prostitutes. There are criminals. There are gays, lesbians, different kind of people. But when your child is old enough to take care of his or herself, you send them to the same school where there are evil people. Do you follow them to school? You advise them. My child, you are going to school. You are Big enough. You are grown up enough to take care of yourself. But no matter how brilliant your child is, can you send your child that is 10 years old to the university? Can you? You will not. Why? It's a thing of joy that your child is about breaking records. At 10, already ready for the university education. But because the child is not matured enough, and because of the kind of environment you are living in, you will not even think of sending that child to school because of influence. That is also the same way. God knows that we, for us to withstand the devil in this world, we need to be matured in him. We also need instructions from him. When God created Adam and Eve and put them on earth, for the first time they were already adults. They were grown up adults and on the day of their creation. They were already grown up because the earth had the presence of somebody that they need to use maturity to withstand. So God did no wrong for sending Satan to the earth. He did nothing wrong in his own wisdom. He shows where to send him. The earth is the Lord's. The world and all that were therein. They all belong to God. 
God shows us what to do and what not to do. He does not take instruction from anybody. So if you think that your excuse for failing is because Satan lives in, this, in the same world with you, it is not an excuse. Are people not succeeding in this world? What we need in this world, tap your neighbor, say neighbor. Neighbor, what you need is a guardian angel. Praise the Lord. We need the presence of God. The Psalm 91 we read said, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. We need to dwell in the secret place of God. We need to abide in Him and He in us. When you are a carrier of the presence of God, when the Spirit of God lives inside of you, no demon can come near you. So, instead of running up and down, meeting prophets, going to prayer houses every day, trying to seek for protection, instead of that one, what we need to seek is seek God and carry Him in you then you don't need to run up or down again. Some of our prayers, they are fire brigade prayers. When there is fire, they go and quench it. After quenching it, they go and pack the truck. Wait for another fire outbreak. No. Your fire is supposed to be burning every time. Your altar is supposed to carry the fire of God that is burning every second. Your head is not supposed to lack oil. There's supposed to be anointing on your head every time. When the Bible says, wash and pray, it means that at every point in time, you're supposed to be vigilant. Supposed to communicate with God, have personal relationship with God. There are things we must correct in Christianity. Today's Christianity, there are things we must correct. Because a lot of people feel that if you know how to pray very well, then you are secured. No. Before you pray very well, you need to have a link with the one you are praying to. And that is where we are failing. If not, are we not praying enough? We are praying so much. But we are having very little result. Why? Because God does not listen to the prayers of sinners. Let us look at Deuteronomy chapter 23, 12 following, so that you will see and understand for yourself. God told Moses, Moses, tell the children of Israel to have diggers. You know what is called digger? Like a shovel, a spade, something you dig with. Why? Because the children of Israel, after eating quail, after eating manna, they were messing up the camp. I hear a lot of preachers say, God does not concern himself with what you wear. He does not concern himself with your body, how you live your life. What he is after is after your heart. So if your heart is not pure, how will your character be pure? If we see only what you do, and the Bible says that, by what they do, by their fruits, you shall know them. Somebody is telling you that forget about the fruits. Forget about what they do and, may, and focus on the heart. Am I seeing your heart? It is what the Bible... You have known me, I've been here since 2011. If I am living a bad life and I am coming to preach to you, will you accept it? God concerns himself with everything about us. He said, present your bodies as living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. For this is your reasonable service. In this ministry, there are thieves. There are 419ers. There are magicians. There are witches and wizards. There are witch doctors in this ministry. And you know what? Many of them have money. Satan pushes money into their hands so that they can use this money to oppress the truth. 
God told Moses, Moses, tell them to dig. Why? Because as they are messing up the place with feces, some will purge. You know, a wolf, they purge belly. Eh? The manna, some of them will take over. Nobody is buying it. No physical human being is baking it. All you need to do every morning, just go there with your basket and take the ones you can finish that same day. And on Friday, you take the ones you will take that Friday and Saturday, which is the Sabbath. So it's a matter of take as much as you can finish. So they were taking so much, and after eating, some of them, they just go to the backyard, uh, back of their tent, and release the thing there. And God warned Moses. In this Deuteronomy 23, 12 following, that tell them that whenever they want to go to the toilet, they should dig the ground. And after digging, they put the mess there. Pass the mess, the feces inside, and turn back and cover it. There are some of us, the places we live, very, very dirty. Let me tell you one of my experiences. You know, I was the administrator of St. Andrew's uh, Hospital, 2012 to 2014. The work there is mush. Staying alone in the house using artificial leg and staying alone, doing everything, go to market, do everything, do laundry, everything. You know, you need to cut your cloth according to your size. Eh? I don't take my clothes outside to wash because after you do that, they will stretch their hands. How many people have called me? I eh, will wash for you. Just give us anything. Laundry men. Who we'll wash for you? But me, my salary cannot carry it. So I do it myself. You cannot be living as a big man where you are not a big man. It will break your neck. There was a time my house was dirty. I was sleeping and the Lord spoke to me. You know what he told me? God said, Hosanna. The place I live must not be dirty like this. The place he himself dwells must not be dirty like this. Make sure your house is always clean. An instruction from God. The same thing we are seeing here. Why? God said, verse 14, For the Lord thy God walketh in the midst of thy camp to deliver thee, and to give up thine enemies before thee. Therefore shall thy camp be holy, that ye see no unclean thing in thee, and turn away from thee. So just messing up the place, instead of going to a normal toilet, a designated place, to pass the mess, instead of going there, just going to the back of the tent and release it in everywhere, only that one could cost the Israelites their lives. Somebody will tell you it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything. The angel of the Lord that was living with them had a challenge with the Israelites. And the challenge was so big. What was the challenge? Everywhere was messed up. And God said, if you don't keep your camp clean, the angel of the Lord will leave you. We are not talking about living in sin. No. This was not committing adultery or stealing or killing. This was just messing up the camp. Not a spiritual mess up, but a physical one. If God is concerned about your environment, and is warning that if you don't clean this environment, my angel will leave you. How much more about our body? Eh? Where the Spirit of God lives, how much more? You remember Samson? Do you remember Saul? That the Spirit of God departed from them? Do you remember? Eh? Some of us are suffering today 
because of the kind of life we are living. Some of us, we have messed up our relationship with God. And God has turned his back on us. And we are crying, thinking that God is so far away. God is not far from us. His ears are not deaf. If the devil sees the wall of protection around you, for him to get you, he pushes you into sin. And when you are committing the sin, and the Holy Spirit is aggrieved, is annoyed with you, and leaves the moment he leaves, the devil comes. While men slept, Satan came and so tests in the midst of the wheat. This is my understanding of God's protection. Do you think they are not pursuing me? Do you know the battles I face? Me, do you know the battles I face? Do you know the heavy battles I face? In this work, I have so much committed myself that Satan is angry with me. Many people are angry with me. My family members, majority of them are angry with me. So the day I go and carry water and turn the water on the fire of God in my life, it is suicide. To you, it may be an enjoyment. Enjoyment. Enjoy yourself. Life is short. But to me, it is suicide. So I don't even need God to tell me to flee from sin before I flee. Because I know that the moment I start living in sin, the fire of God in me will go down and flies will perch on me. You know what happens? When the fire goes off, flies will come. You don't need to drive the flies. All you need to do is bring the fire up again. But some of us, when flies are perching on us, house, El Buburu, you know, eh? eh? When they are passing on us, cats crying everywhere. What we do? Instead of bringing up our fire, go to God. Go to the altar of God. Reconcile with God and bring up our fire. What we do is we go to men of God. Pray for me. Oh. We go to this one. Pray for me. Oh. They source it. You source it there. You source it there. They prophesy here. They prophesy here. And then you gather all the prayers together. After one week, the problem is back again. It is wrong. You can carry the fire of God. You don't need anybody. I'm not saying that God has not put leaders in the church. But that is not what I mean. What I mean is that even as you are under your pastor, I know there are people from different churches here. Even as you are under the spiritual or sea of your shepherd, your bishop, you don't need to become a slave to anybody because you have no relationship with God. And do you know what? A lot of people today, they don't even want us to have our personal relationship with God. Because the time, the time we start seeing our future, the moment we start seeing that the devil has planned an accident, the moment we start having revelations from God, we will no longer patronize them. And the seed we are sowing every month, we stop. So they don't even want us to have our personal relationship with God and relate with him one-on-one. -on -one. They feel that without them, we cannot get to God. Then what did Jesus die for? Jesus is our high priest. What did he die for? He died. And when he died, the veil, as you can see, the altar, is open. You can see the altar table. The veil was turned into two. The barrier was broken. But some of us, because we don't want to do what we retain our angel, because we don't want to abide by the rules of Christianity, we fire our angel and we turn ourselves to slaves of some criminals who parades themselves around, who arrange miracles. Are you not, who has seen that video of a five, a woman who appeared in five different churches? You have seen it. You have seen it. I've seen it. Thank you. We will bring all the truth out. There must be freedom in the church. 
That is why some of us are born. To do anything possible to protect the truth. At the cost of anything, at all costs, the truth must not die in our time. We will protect it because this Bible, lots of people shed their blood for this Bible. For this Bible you carry today was preserved with the blood of the saints. Anytime you carry this Bible, you are carrying something that was protected by the blood of the saints. Human beings standing at the cost of their lives and they were beheaded. So we will not play with these truths in our own time. Do you have your angel with you? It's time to reconcile with God. If you can reconcile with him, remember what happened when Samson, Samson, in Judges chapter 16, verse 20, they said the Philistines are coming. Samson said, as usual, let me shake up myself. And all the fetters, all the chains will melt away. He shook himself. And he did not know that God had departed from him. Each time I read this place, I cry. Even Saul himself, after the Holy Spirit endured with him and became tired and departed from him, an evil spirit came upon him. Some of us are facing torment today. Why? Because we have left God. Just the way in 1 Samuel chapter 28, when Saul saw that God was no longer speaking to him, he went to the witch in Endor and consulted the witch. A witch cooked the last meal he ate before going to war. And he died there. Some of us, we no longer care. We don't care about the man of God. If a man of God is praying for you and is touching you somehow, will you not know that the Spirit of God is not there? Do you need any prophet to tell you that this one is not a man of God? Eh? When you do packaging and do all this push-up, and you go to him, and he does not tell you anything about the way you are dressed, eh? Instead, he's telling you, you look sweet. Will you not run from that place? This week, somebody come and say, one prophet said, I had this pregnancy, I won't be able to give it. I should give money so that he will pray for me. I say, run. Run. It's my prayer that jobs should come to Nigeria and in Africa. When we have jobs, and they are paying like 5,000 US dollars a month, some of these mushroom churches will close up and people will go back to their normal businesses. That is the truth. Today, if you are ready, you will have your angel back. Let's be on our feet. If you are sick, it is the sickness you treat. Treat the sickness today. Why is it that the angel of God is not with you. I went to Erweni, I think 2008 or 2007. While I was lying down, I was afraid. The only place I could see, I could find to, to lay my head was a man who was smoking in their hem. One of the traditional leaders, rulers in the community. I had no money for a hotel. And I was worried. I was praying. Small sleep just came upon me. And I saw a man with a sword. Drawn sword. Stretch it across me while I was lying on the bed. And I said, this is the angel of God. I slept off. That is a guardian angel. Lift up your two hands to God. Can you talk to God just with a minute? That God... I have made you too small in my eyes. Please forgive me. I can't imagine me living with a holy angel and then me engaging in sinful habits. Lord, forgive me. I have enslaved myself enough. Lord, forgive me. 
if the angels of God had been physical beings with us, we would dare not do some of the things we do. Now, as the Lord to restore back to you, restore back to you your angel, restore back to you his spirit. If you have lost his spirit, there are many people in the church today. The Holy Spirit is not in there. When they see people speaking in tongues, they learn their own tongues and speak in tongues to mimic, to imitate the truth. Ask the Lord to release His Spirit upon you. Lord, fill me with your Spirit. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord. Fill me with your anointing. Lord, fill me today. Grant up your prayer. Lord, look upon these hearts here. Anyone that is ready, Father, come in. May the blood of Jesus make you whole. From this moment, may the angel of the Lord be restored back to you. If you have lost your angel, and the devil is always oppressing you, which is oppressing you in the night, you can't sleep. Any little witch can jump on top of you and mess you up. Succubus, incubus. Spirit husband, sleeping with you in your dream. May the Lord God deliver you today. Yeah. Receive the fire of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Receive the spirit of the Most High God. Yeah. I decree that you will no longer be a slave to any power. Yeah. The elemental powers of this world will not oppress you again. Yeah. Receive grace to continue in the truth. Yeah. It is well with your life. Yeah. In Jesus' name we pray. Shout hallelujah. We hope you were blessed by this message. For more information, visit our website www.egoeyeopener.com. Email us at rosannadavid at ymail.com or info at egoeyeopener.com. God bless you.